Hello everyone, so today I'm going to be walking you through the process of creating a splash art. I'm going to be detailing my decision making process as much as I can in this video. And before I begin, I just want to let you know that the base sketch for this was created using a photo of me. So I took a photo of myself and I posed for this image and I ended up tracing on top of it. So the base sketch is already complete by the time I started recording. So overall this was a really fun process and it took me around 18 hours. It went pretty smoothly so I thought it would be a great example of how my process is supposed to go. So after putting down the sketch I usually just do basic values. And also there's a slight gradient of light where the background is lighter than the foreground. And that's just again to reinforce the perspective and um, sort of bring the character and the two objects in the front forward. And create a little bit of distance between her and what's behind her. So I usually start with a loose sketch. And I just use this to really quickly, quickly compose and lay down the structures of my P, of my artwork. After I've already figured those out, I go in and I add a detailed sketch of the armor using reference of the character. I try to be as close as possible to the original. But obviously I try to wrap it around the pose that I've got here and um, I do the same for the hair and the face, just trying to redefine them a little bit before I go in and add any color just to make sure that everything looks okay. Now for the face here, uh, my initial sketch was pretty strong so I ended up following that pretty closely because I really like the features. But sometimes I use reference and I end up changing the face completely throughout the process. Now what I'm doing here is going in with a adjustment layer. Um, and I first started with multiply to add the colors but I then changed it to soft light because I thought multiply was a bit dark. But sometimes it works depending on the values of the image. So if it's a brighter image I use multiply and otherwise I use overlay or soft light uh, just depending on you know what looks good so after that right on top I start and add the light that's coming from behind as well as some color dodge sort of soft uh, scattered light because I wanted I wanted to make it look like uh, the light is scattered by the water particles in the air after that, I just go in with uh, a bunch of color on normal blend mode, just laying down the foundations of the face and the armor, and I don't really like doing like detailed fan uh, line, line art because I think that it's kind of a waste of time for me in particular, it doesn't really do much, um, so I just I always just paint on top of a loose sketch. I think that gives me a bit more freedom to change, you know, stuff as I go. And I added a little bit of blood on the face just to, you know, tie her in with the background a bit more, make her look more sort of um, like she was just in a big fight with these uh, nagas. What I do for the armor is I just go in, like I said, with a normal blend mode and I try to pick colors that are true to the original, but I also try to keep in mind the atmosphere of the image. So if the colors are really bright, I'm going to keep in mind that this is a nocturnal scene and I'm going to dim them down a bit or make them a bit more blue. And um, I just use the color picker tool to sort of darken and lighten the colors as I go to, uh, to follow the shape of the object that I'm working on. Sometimes I use multiply and overlay to add shadows and light, but in this case I just felt like this was a lot more convenient. Um, and 
you know, I cover up the sketch as I go and I try to follow it as close as I can as a guideline but you know if something doesn't seem right I just change it I tweak it around I go along with the process to see where it takes me I don't really like following the initial sketch too much because sometimes you know I didn't make the right decision at the start so we end up changing it but in this case you could see that throughout the process nothing really changes that much in this image I'm keeping the values the same I'm keeping the composition the same I ended up scaling some stuff um, a little bit later on but that's pretty much it so I think this is a good example of having a really strong foundation it really saves a lot of time because if you know what you're doing from the start and you know what to expect then you don't really need to change anything along the way so uh, throughout the process I sort of alternate from object to object I don't really stay on one thing until it's done and then move on to the next just because I feel like that's a bit more tiring and it sort of gets boring at some point uh, you know working on the same thing until it's done it could get frustrating and I think it's very important to sort of look away for a little bit that makes it easier for me to see my mistakes as I'm working but also that sort of serves as a break so if I'm working on the body for a long time and I'm, I'm starting to get frustrated and I don't know, uh, you know, what decisions to make at some point, you know, I get kind of lost. And I just move on to the background, just to switch it up a little bit. And then I come back with a fresh eye and I can sort of see, uh-huh, so this is what I, what I should have done. And I also ask for feedback, like I ask my friends for feedback, my artist friends. I ask my family for feedback because even though they're not artists, sometimes, you know, regular people can see something that's wrong or they'll be like oh is that supposed to be like that and then you know i'll i'll notice the mistake and i'll go in and fix it next time generally though um i think it's really important to sort of give yourself a break while you're working on something especially if it's something so complex of course unless you have like a tight deadline but luckily for me most of my commissions don't really have tight deadlines so i can take a break i can you know, alternate between commissions so that I, I'm able to look at them with a fresh eye and just, you know, really have energy to give 100%. Because if I'm tired and if I'm sort of done and I'm if I'm over it, <laughs> I'm not really giving 100%. And that really shows in some of my artworks. And I think that's okay. You know, I don't... I don't I try not to judge myself for it because you know I'm just a person <laughs> and sometimes you're not on top of your game and sometimes you're doing really well I think this was the first image that I did after summer break and it really shows because I feel like it's so fresh and just so unique I feel like it's it turned out really great I'm really proud of it because I kind of try to overcome some of my biggest difficulties one of them being the details so I used to add a lot of details everywhere and I used to really spend a lot of time on minor stuff that didn't really matter in the end and you know one of these paintings would take me like 30 40 hours and it was just a long and tedious process trying to get everything to look perfect and I really tried to overcome that with this one. You know, and trying to really think about the focus of the image, which was in this case the face and the upper body, and just the character itself. And to do that, I played along, played around with the values. We wanted to make sure that she's popping out, so I made the background behind her really bright but not brighter than the rim light so the rim light around her is pure white at points but there's no pure white in the background 
but still the background looks really really bright because there's no darkness in there and at the foreground there's almost I don't think there's any pure black on this image I made sure that I don't use any pure black because that was another issue of mine I used to use a lot of black and it kind of takes away from the atmosphere I think so I tried my best not to use pure black but the foreground still looks really really dark and you know to make her pop at the foreground as well i made the ground beneath her feet lighter than her legs and her overall body and to sort of take away the contrast from the two nagas like the dragonoid characters at the bottom of the image i made the ground around them darker so that they don't really stick out like if you zoom in i added a bunch of details on the faces because they're in the foreground and you know as far as i'm concerned what's in the foreground should be more detailed than what's in the background but i didn't want the detail to overshadow the character so I added as much detail as I could in those faces, but I ended up just darkening the whole foreground so that they don't stick out too much. If you zoom in, you see the detail, but if you zoom out, it's just, you know, the focus is still on her face, which was really important. Sometimes that's really hard for me to do. And you can see me referencing an old version of the image. I do that a lot just to make sure that I'm keeping everything true to the original sketch just because I really liked the original sketch but also comparing gives me a good idea of whether or not I'm improving. So sometimes you know the, um, the original sketch could be a bit weak and as I go I would sort of um, overcome some of the weaknesses of the sketch and you know uh, fix my mistakes and make the composition better and by just going back and forth and looking at what I had before I'm able to really see uh, my progress and also I use a black and white adjustment layer on top of the whole image that I just toggle on and off to check the values so you see me turn that on and off from time to time and uh, I had already done the rain particles, which I used radio blur and motion blur for to make them fit the perspective. But as you can see, I paint the, I paint the image and I have the rain toggled off so that it just doesn't get in the way. And I do that with a lot of the sort of effects like the blood splatter and you know, different textures that I might be adding. I just hide them so that I can render what's underneath. Now you can see me adding details to these uh, heads. I'm trying to blend them in with the background as much as possible. I'm not trying to make them stick out. Uh, just so that they sort of fall and they have a little bit of weight on them. Um, and they don't look there, like they're floating. That was my main goal. Now for the other details of the background i try not to go overboard with uh, rendering what i try to do is basically define the different shapes and just make sure that they're distinguishable and then just stop there i didn't want to make them too detailed just like i uh, just because like i said i wanted the focus to be on the face and i didn't want any of the other elements to take away from that so um, what you see me do there with the um, spear was I basically copied and pasted it and flipped it. Now I think that's a very important uh, tool <laughs> that everybody can use because it saves a lot of time, especially with something like this that's in the background that's not really important. And what I usually do is I copy and paste it and then I just go over the second one and I flip it or I add some different details just to sort of distinguish it and make it different but you know at the base of it it's still the same object and I didn't spend like you know four or five six sometimes depending on what it is sometimes 20 minutes doing the same thing again but on the other side you know 
I feel like it's really important to keep in mind that um, you have these tools and they're at your disposal and you can use them and there's nothing to be ashamed of for you know uh, taking the the quick route because sometimes that's really important especially in uh, the industry like sometimes you get briefs for you know concept art that you need to finish you know the same day and in order to do that you need to cut corners like you can't spend a bunch of time rendering every little detail unless like you're really fast but i assume like not everybody is that quick especially if you're doing something new that's not familiar like with fan art it's pretty much you know i would say it's pretty much easier because you already have a really strong reference like i'm not um developing this character myself the only thing that i'm doing is sort of putting my own spin on it and you know making the composition so i would say in these illustrations the hardest part is actually composing and then afterwards like rendering i already have the reference of the character and i'm just chipping away trying to make it look as close as possible to the original that's pretty much it. Now, I tried to play around with some lighting effects for the daggers because in the game these daggers have um, very uh, sort of nice glowing effects on them but I thought in the rain those would look really weird and I didn't want to add another color because her whole sort of body and face is within the warm sort of uh, range and I'd have to add like a really bright red color to the daggers and I didn't want to disrupt the color palette that they already had so I ended up scrapping that now I did try to make the face look a bit damp like wet from the rain but uh, what I didn't think about back then was the hair apparently like when I posted this on reddit a lot of people noticed that the hair was dry I think that was a bit of an oversight on my end, but looking back at it, I wouldn't really change it. So I wouldn't make the hair wet because that would make it stick to her head. Um, and the hair I felt was a really sort of uh, an important part of the composition. I had already um, placed it in the, the pl uh, in the position that it is in, in the sketch. So I really thought that it brought the piece together and I didn't want to make it wet because the silhouette would sort of change. So even if I was able to go back and make the hair wet to make it more believable, then I probably wouldn't do that. And that's something that goes for a lot of these fantasy illustrations. Like at the end of the day, it is a fantasy illustration and you can kind of bend the rules to make it look good. For example, sometimes you have to make the character left-handed or, you know, you need to do some weird effect or like weird light that doesn't really make sense. But if it brings something good to the composition, then I take go for it because at the end of the day, what's important, at least for me, is to have the image look good to look the best that it can possibly be and as far as believability i think figuring out the perspective the proportions is more important than you know whether or not the hair is wet when it's raining you know <laughs> so it's definitely funny that the hair is dry but you know you could say that it just started raining <laughs> i can make up an excuse for that but anyway, so what I'm doing here is I'm using selections to block out the hair just because that allows me to make those big um, those big strokes without worrying about messing up the shoulder pad or going into the chest there. So I use selections just to sort of um, protect the rest of the image when I'm working on an element like that. And just continuing to render is probably my favorite part because that's when the 
image really comes to life like all the little details make it pop really nicely and what I did with this image was actually I dialed back on the details if you look at my other artworks you're gonna see a lot of reflections on the gear especially the metal parts are really really shiny and really reflective and I didn't want that for this image I wanted it to be more matte if that makes sense and that's just because I kind of got tired of making everything overly shiny and I felt like um, this would make it easier for me to bring focus to the face and I feel like that really paid off in the end because as far as compositions go I think this is one of my strongest sort of um, compositions because it has a very clear focal point and I kept the values consistent throughout and that was something that was really hard for me to do because I used to focus on the details a lot so what you see me doing here is just adding some color dodge layers to add some glow to the shoulders to the eyes and um, you know just fixing fixing up some tiny little details and tweaking some stuff that I thought could look better at this point I was still referencing um, the old versions of the image to see kind of like if I've lost any of the sort of essence of the first sketch that I had and one of the most fun parts for me was drawing the details on these naga heads just because i love like dragons and dinosaurs and you know uh creatures that have similar features and i had a lot of fun making these um and i really think they tied the image together so for the rest of the process i just had to polish and render some of the details that were still missing like just redefining the faces at the front adding some little reflections of light adding some particle effects uh, you can see me just fixing the tail up there and um, you know just really trying to bring this image to the finish line I was doing my best to do it as fast as possible and you know keep it as simple as possible try to convey that information you know and keep the composition solid throughout and I added some mist on top of the character and the background just to make it look a bit more sort of uh, atmospheric just add a bit more atmosphere and make it blend in better because it was very sharp you can see me doing the um, copy and paste thing again with the shoulder uh, because I didn't want to spend you know 10 to 15 minutes doing that little corner there but I did end up rendering the rest of the shoulder just because it was a different perspective I didn't put a lot of detail into it though and you can see me doing the same for the rest of the image and just doing some big value checks here and there to make her really pop and that was basically it and this is the finished result I really like how this turned out and I hope this video was helpful to you guys if you want to take a closer look at the image, I'll link my art station below so you can check that out. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.